Okay, in this recording, we are going to be going over Oceania and the Western Hemisphere, just to try and get our bearings about us. And remember that if this is your part of the world that I have divided up into four, uh, pay attention, watch it frequently, and see if you cannot commit to memory first and foremost. Remember, you are going to memorize the capitals of all the countries, but also pay attention to other geographical items. So let's go ahead and get started and zoom in on Australia. Australia, as you know, is a former British colony founded essentially by criminals, and the vast majority of the population live on the eastern and southern part, which is over here, very sparsely populated to what you have here, although you will find all kinds of cities along the coast, especially. Starting at the top, you, of course, have Darwin, so named for the naturalist, Melville Island, you come around, you pass the Great Sandy Desert and this area of Australia known as Western Australia that also includes the Great Victoria Desert. Moving it around, you have Perth, which is a marginally important city. And of course, you have the Northern Territory with Alice Springs. Ayers Rock in the very middle of the continent slash country, also known as Uluru, which is very much important to the natives of Australia who are known as Aborigines. They are included in a recent, you gotta know, you gotta know these indigenous people and they're incredibly important. You have, of course, uh, the uh, territory of Queensland and then South Australia and over here, New South Wales, where I said vast majority of the population lie. The capital of, of course, Australia is Canberra. A lot of people think that it is Sydney. That is its largest city. Noted, of course, for its uh, opera house as designed by Utsun, a fellow from Scandinavia. You have the Darling River, which is here, the Murray River, which is here. Also, in recent uh, uh, current events, uh, Australia had some horrible fires that were raging, especially in the northern part of the country, and it has suffered tremendously from a lot of drought all across the whole of the country. Melbourne is the second largest, and it is right over the Bass Strait, which separates Tasmania, with its capital at Hobart, from the mainland. Please note as well, separating Australia and Tasmania from New Zealand is the Tasman Sea. The highest point in Australia is Mount Kosciusko, which at 7,000 feet is by far the lowest tallest peak in the whole of the seven continents. But nevertheless, uh, hopefully you can look up Australia, see about all the sorts of things they ask about, learn the recent history of Australia, its current prime minister, as well as other current prime ministers, all the way back to John Howard, who was a longtime prime minister through the 1990s and the like. But nevertheless, hopefully you will um, come to learn the country decently well. And of course, all along the uh, northeastern coast is that uh, Great Barrier Reef that we should be familiar with. Zooming over to New Zealand, it is obviously divided into two main islands, of course, inventively named North Island and South Island, and so-called New Zealand because Zealand is an island in Denmark on which, of course, Copenhagen lies. South Island particularly has the Southern Alps, a popular thing to ask about in Quiz Bowl. And you have both the Cook Strait, named after the explorer, James Cook, as well as Mount Cook, also named for the same. Christchurch recently was in the news, and by recently I mean within the last five years, for a horrible attack on a synagogue, which led the prime minister at the time, she recently stepped down, Jacinda Ardern, to clamp down on private gun ownership across the country. The capital of New Zealand is Wellington, but its largest city is, of course, Auckland. The natives of New Zealand, whereas, of course, Australia has the Aborigines, the natives of New Zealand are known as the Maori. And we move on to Oceania. It is a lot of teeny tiny countries that are essentially island countries. Uh, just to go through them, make sure you are familiar with the country and its capital. You have Palau with Melikeok not a country, but controlled by the United States are the Northern Mariana Islands with Guam right to its south. You have Micronesia with, of course, Palakir. The Marshall Islands with capital Majuro. Papua New Guinea, which is half of the island of New Guinea, but Papua is the country with Port Moresby. We cover that in Asia. 
the Solomon Islands capital, Honiara, which is, of course, on the island of Guadalcanal, which was played a major role in World War II. Nauru, with capital Yaren. You have Kiribati, which has capital Tarawa, stretched along quite a ways, all the way to uh, Christmas Island, but in its native, you can see the name of it there. Tuvalu, which of course has capital uh, Funafuti. These places here are not necessarily countries, so we move to Samoa with capital Apia, and then there's right next to it to its East American Samoa. You have Fiji with capital Suva. You have Vanuatu with capital Port Vila. And again, not a country, but a territory that you can see here with New Caledonia. Tonga, which has capital of Nuku Alofa, another territory of New Zealand, another territory of New Zealand, the Cook Islands. And then, of course, you have French Polynesia, which is not a country, but controlled by France, one of its overseas departments with Tahiti. Tahiti, remember, is the location where the French... I guess you can call him Impressionist, Paul Gauguin moved and, of course, had many of his paintings featuring, featuring the natives that are there. To the north of, obviously, the area known as Micronesia, you have the state of Hawaii, as well as Wake Island, another site for a lot of stuff going on in World War II. So, Please familiarize yourself as much as you can with this part of the world. So let's jump over to, which is also included as a part of the division, um, Western Hemisphere. Uh, because of its prevalence in Quiz Bowl, I have as a separate division the United States and Canada. So we will just con concentrate on um, Middle America, Central America, uh, and then, of course, South America. So let's first turn our attention to Mexico. Mexico has a rich history uh, dating back to its colonial times, leading all the way to the actual conquest of the Aztecs, uh, which of course were at Tenochtitlan, now modern day Mexico City, the most populous city of North America uh, by Hernan Cortez and the eventual fall of Montezuma and uh, Triste Noche, uh, which of course is that sad night. Uh, Nevertheless, uh, moving on, starting up here, you have two main peninsulas to know for Mexico, Baja California, and, of course, the incredibly important Yucatan Peninsula, which, of course, is a haven for tourists, but also it was the site of the Mayan civilization. You have located over here um, a site of Mayan ruins called Chichen Itza, which is the greatest pyramid of the Western Hemisphere. Nevertheless, you have the Sierra Madre Mountains that extend down into Mexico from the border towns that are up here to the north. Please pay attention to Tijuana, which is on the Baja, right across from San Diego. Ciudad Juarez, which is the sister city almost, it seems, of El Paso in Texas. And then, of course, you have Brownsville, Texas, as the lowest spot before you hit Mexico with Matamoros on the other side that is there. Nevertheless, so you have the Sierra Madre Mountains, uh, Puebla, which is here, which I'm assuming, although it might not be necessarily the site of the Battle of Puebla, 1862, Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May, in which the Mexicans had defeated the French, not Mexican Independence Day. Other cities of note, you have Guadalajara, which is here, Acapulco, which, of course, used to be a rather popular tourist destination for vacationers, but it has been overridden with crime. Of course, as you know, much of Mexico, it can be rather dangerous because of the influence of the Mexican cartels that create or control the drug trade, like the Sinaloa, uh, who I think was controlled by El Chapo. Nevertheless, uh, back to the Yucatan Peninsula, it is also the site of the impact crater that uh, was the end of the dinosaurs some um, 60 some odd million years ago. So that is Mexico, a lot to learn for it. The, of course, country was controlled by the PRI for most of the 20th century, that is the name of the political party, until Vicente Fox in the early 2000s uh, won the presidency. But I think it has since passed into the um, PRI yet again. But nevertheless, uh, lots of Mexican authors uh, to learn. Uh, lots of Mexican artists, including Diego Rivera and his wife, Frida Kahlo, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's move on in the interest of time, as we always have to. 
So also on the Yucatan Peninsula, you have Guatemala part therein and Belize. So the Mayans, which are the civilization here, the Aztecs were, of course, over here. Belize is, of course, unique. It has a um, uniqueness about it because it used to be known as British Honduras uh, and is a English-speaking country, and thus makes it a haven for English-speaking criminals from the United States. Um, Belmopan is the capital. It is a, like I said, haven for tourists. Lots of cruises come down here right off of Cancun to an island called Cozumel. And of course, they also visit Belize, which has a unique physical feature right on the outside of it called the Great Blue Hole. Go look it up. It's really fascinating. Guatemala is immediately to the south of Mexico with its capital of Guatemala City. El Salvador, which is rather torn with violence and murders. Lots of people fleeing El Salvador and making their way uh, to the United States in hopes of a better life as a refugee. Honduras, right off the coast of Honduras, you have, of course, uh, very deep waters. And so that, of course, is what has given its name with its capital of Tegucigalpa. You have Nicaragua, which, of course, has its namesake lake, Lake Nicaragua, and its capital is Managua. Nicaragua is, of course, uh, the locale of the Sandinistas in the 1970s and 80s uh, that were involved in the Iran um, arms uh, crisis of the Reagan administration. At any rate, they were supporting uh, the places or the war down here between the Sandinistas and the other side. Uh, and they were funding it by, of course, uh, arms sales to Iran. You then have Costa Rica with San Jose as its capital, the Mosquito Coast, and of course, Panama, which is the site of the Panama Canal. Uh, Manuel Noriega, I think. I'm going to go look that up just to make sure. I think, well, it's important. It comes up all the time, but uh, Noriega. Yes, there it is. He is the former military leader of uh, Panama. I remember him being quite a bit in the news. So it looks like he has recently died in 2017, but uh, he was a American adversary uh, for quite a few years until he was finally uh, deposed, as it were. So now we move to... South America. And just in general, you have in South America, um, the western side of the country, which is dominated by the Andes Mountains, and then of course the eastern side, especially in Brazil, which is dominated by the, of course, Amazon River, in many ways, the greatest river on earth. And in a moment, we'll go into the Caribbean. So let's make our way in South America and talk about the things that are important. The connection of the Isthmus of Panama, that of course comes from North America to South America, is Colombia. Colombia is a rather popular answer line for quiz bowl questions, uh, particularly for its capital of Bogota, but also you have the cities of Medellin, which in the 1980s under Pablo Escobar's influence was the cocaine drug capital in many ways of the world. But, uh, of course, not all that Colombia is known for. However, an interesting note is that Colombia also has a rather thriving population of hippopotamuses. Uh, that drug lord that I said earlier, Escobar, he brought in some uh, hippopotami and, or hippopotamoi. And even after he was captured and deposed, it was uh, something that they were able to stay around and very much uh, thrived. So uh, look up Columbia on QB Reader, find out all the clues that often they are asked about, but be familiar most especially with Medellin and the capital Bogota. You then have Venezuela, which is up here home to Lake Maracaibo. That is, of course, something that is asked about quite a bit, named so for the city Maracaibo that is there. Um, not really a lake in the traditional sense as it opens up to the ocean, but nevertheless so called. Venezuela is currently in the uh, struggles between um, the leader Nicolas Maduro and the claimed leader Juan Guaido. Maduro was the successor, of course, of Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez being a 
a socialist and communist sympathizer uh, and therefore an adversary of the United States. So you see in Venezuela, you have Ciudad Bolivar. Bolivar, remember, is a character who in the 19th century was known as the liberator of the whole of the continent and hoped in many ways to bring that continent into a united front, but uh, was unsuccessful. However, incredibly, incredibly uh, important whenever you have Bolivar questions, they'll mention uh, Gaia Quill Conference and San Martin and, and, and various different battles that he engaged in. Just quickly go through Bolivar's uh, Wikipedia page and you can learn a lot about him. The Orinoco is the main river dominating Venezuela uh, that you see is flowing to the north, emptying into the Atlantic Ocean right beneath Trinidad and Tobago. On the top of Brazil, you have these three countries, well, actually two countries in one French department, uh, Guiana, with its capital, Georgetown. That is the site of the uh, Jonestown massacre. Jim Jones led his cult down there. And after an investigation uh, of a, a few United States representatives, actually one of them was killed. And so there was the mass suicide, uh, unfortunately, a sad time in the 19, late 1970s. You have Suriname with its capital of Paramaribo and then French Guiana, which is, like I said, a French department with Cayenne. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Devil's Island, the uh, fam infamous, I should say, French uh, prison is off of the coast of French Guiana. So before we deal with the Brazilian uh, uh, country. Uh, let's deal with these countries over here on the west side. So right below Colombia, you have Ecuador, so named for the equator, which passes through it. And of course, uh, you have several things of note beyond the capital of Quito. You have uh, Mount Cotopaxi and particularly Mount Chimborazo. You also have Guayaquil. I mentioned that earlier with the Guayaquil Conference of Bolivar. But at any rate, Mount Chimborazo is the farthest point from the center of the Earth because it is so close and tall to the equator that we all know as the Earth spins around, it bulges at its center of the equator, and so therefore it makes it the farthest point. But there it is, Ecuador, Cotopaxi, and Mount Chimborazo, two places of note. Right below that you have Peru, which is the center, of course, of the Incan Empire. And of course, uh, remember that the Incan Empire was overcome in the 1500s by uh, Francisco Pizarro uh, deposing Atahualpa, who had himself at the very end kind of rivaled his brother Huascar. But at any rate, uh, um, capital of Peru is uh, Lima. And uh, particularly in the Andes Mountains, which are tremendously tall because of the Pacific Plate the tectonic plate crashing into the South American plate with subduction. And so the plate over here is crashing into it, but then going underneath the plate of the South America and therefore creating these very large mountains. Nevertheless, in there you have Cusco, as well as the site of Machu Picchu, which was found by Hiram Bingham, a Yale scholar in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, go look up Machu Picchu. It is incredibly important. And that Hiram Bingham guy comes up quite a bit. You then have Bolivia, which is landlocked and, of course, the namesake of Bolivar. It has two capitals, La Paz, which is near Lake Titicata, Titicaca, which is the highest navigable lake on Earth. You also have Sucre that is located here. Now, as we begin to look nearer to the south, and like I said, I'm going to deal with Brazil last, is that you need to know these geographic regions, particularly the three of them. The southern part of Argentina, all the way down to the southern tip, is Patagonia. Then, of course, you have the Pampas, which is the region in the center of Argentina, and Gran Chaco which of course is to the north of Argentina and into then Paraguay, as it were. And then above there, you have Mato Grosso. So please be familiar with Patagonia. Go look it up, the Pampas. And this is where a lot of ranching will occur. And then the Gran Chaco. But uh, let's take a look now at Chile. Chile is a long stretch country dominated by the Andean Mountains and the Atacama Desert, the one of the driest deserts on Earth. It is noted as Chile for its mass production of copper. It produces more copper than any other place in the world. The capital is Santiago that you see here, but other important cities to be familiar with are, of course, Valparaiso, as well as Concepcion, and so forth and so on. Nevertheless, um, 
the highest point in South America is right on the Chilean Argentina border. It is Mount Aconcagua, and it is a tremendously tall mountain at 22,000 feet tall. Uh, of course, a little, little bit less than Everest at 29,000 feet and some change, uh, but nevertheless, uh, incredibly important. Chile has played a large role in the 20th century. Be familiar with authors from Chile, like, of course, um, Isabel Allende and House of the Spirits is what she wrote. And of course, you also have uh, another character by the name of Allende, who was a dictator or ruler over Chile. Uh, and he was deposed by Pinochet or Pinochet in the 1970s. So when you read about Chile and Quiz Bowl, that sort of business comes up quite a bit. And likewise, for Argentina in the 20th century, um, Perón, Juan Perón and his wife, Eva uh, Perón, uh, come to obviously a, a whole bunch uh, Argentina, so named because uh, of its silver production, as it were, and particularly in Bolivia at Potosí that you see there right below Sucre, that's where a lot of silver was produced that was then sailed across the Pacific and traded with the Chinese outside of Manila at what is considered to be the first of the uh, Chinatowns, as it were. Going all the way down to the south of South America, you have this Tierra del Fuego, which is literally the land of fire, the archipelago that is down here right off, separated from the mainland by the Strait of Magellan, so named for Magellan, having obviously encircled the earth, uh, being the first person for a circumnavigation. Off of the coast as well, you have uh, the Falkland Islands, the site of a 1980s war between the UK, which claims it, and of course Argentina, who claimed them as well. The capital of the Falklands is Stanley, and if you just listen out for the phrase Goose Green, you'll be able to get the answer of the Falkland Islands, or the Falkland Islands War, because that was an event in the time of that war in 1983, I think it was. Capital of Argentina is Buenos Aires, known as the, of course, Good Airs, literally translated, and the site of the Piranha River, entering into the Rio de la Plata. Literally, it means the river of, <coughs> excuse me, silver. Uruguay has, of course, tucked itself underneath both Argentina and Brazil, and its capital is Montevideo. So finally, let's deal with... Well, we forgot about Paraguay, also landlocked along with Bolivia, and its capital is Asuncion, Brazil, the huge place. It was discovered by a explorer named Cabral. Oh, and by the way, before I go on, please make sure that you are, if you are responsible for South America, at least marginally aware of the War of the Triple Alliance, which was devastating to Paraguay, and also the War of the Pacific. Those are two major wars that have occurred within the last 300 years on this continent and helped to shape it as we see it now. Whenever somebody thinks about Brazil, they cannot help but think about the Amazon. In many ways, it is the greatest river on Earth with the greatest flow of water. Uh, it is not the longest, second longest behind the Nile, but tremendous nevertheless. Uh, at Manaus, a hugely important city in the actual interior, especially with rubber production originally, is where you have the confluence of the Nero River, the Black River, and the Amazon River uh, that is right there. Very often the answer will be the Amazon or it could be Brazil, but Manaus, incredibly important to know. When it was held the World Cup last in Brazil, which I think it might have been 2012, 2016, the United States had to play a match or two in Manaus, which was just miserable because of its overwhelming humidity and heat and so forth and so on. As you go along the coastline, you encounter two major Brazilian cities down here. Of course, famous Rio with its Christ the Redeemer statue that overhangs the city. It has its favelas, lots and lots of questions I've heard over the years about Rio de Janeiro, but more populous even than Rio, right near to it is of course Sao Paulo, the most populous city in all of South America. But lots of other things to know about, of course, the country. Its capital is Brasilia. Originally, it had been, of course, Rio, but they redid the capital. And it was a capital by design. I forget the name of the fellow who designed it, but we will find out right now to make sure that we are on top of it all. So Brasilia. And we're going to find out who is the fellow who designed it. Uh, Oscar Niemeyer, that's it. Uh, he comes up sometimes. Uh, I don't know where I just seen it, but oh, there it is. 
He is a city planned by him, a resilient architect, one of the key figures in the development of modern architecture. So uh, that is the person responsible for the design of the capital city of Brazil. And so please be aware of all the cool stuff, uh, not only the Amazon River, but the Nero River, the Parana River, that, like I said, runs down through here to obviously all the way uh, to where one finds uh, Buenos Aires and so forth and so on. Now, I think there's one more thing that we should talk about lest we be remiss with the Western Hemisphere, and that is the Caribbean. So quickly, I know this is kind of drug on somewhat, but let's take a look at the Caribbean. So in the Caribbean, you have what are known as the Greater Antilles, which are these larger islands, and then the Lesser Antilles that you can see here. These are, of course, sometimes known as the West Indies, as this is the location to where originally these explorers, especially first led by Columbus, led or made landfall. They were inhabited by a group known as the Taino at the arrival of what's his name, Columbus, as it were. So let's first talk about the Bahamas. You have here a used to be a British controlled colony, but now a part of the Commonwealth. If you don't know what the Commonwealth is, you should go look it up. It's a group of countries, uh, some of them independent, uh, a lot of them independent, uh, who were once a part of the great British Empire. And here you have Cuba. Lots of things to know for Cuba. Fulgencio Batista in the late 1950s was overthrown by, of course, Castro. Then, of course, uh, Castro Fidel was brother uh, Raul Castro, but now ruled by someone else, uh, but dominated by communism since the 1950s, as it were. Havana Harbor, which is the location of the painting Watson and the Shark, as well as the destruction of the U.S. Maine. Remember the Maine that began the Spanish-American War in the late 1800s, early 1900s, as it were. Guantanamo Bay is an incredibly important place because there is a U.S. military base there, and it is the location to where, after 9-11, a lot of suspected terrorists were held uh, and is kind of a, not necessarily a black eye in recent American history, but uh, a, a very controversial place within the last oh, 20, 30 years. Right below Cuba, you have Jamaica uh, with its capital of Kingston. Uh, lots to know about Jamaica when it comes to um, tourists and, and, and other sorts of uh, issues. Uh, it is the home of many a sprinters. Lots of sprinters come from the, uh, of course, um, Caribbean countries and islands and the like. Uh, nevertheless, uh, moving on over here to this island known, of course, as Hispaniola. It is divided in not half, really, but the western half is going to be the French-speaking Haiti, which predates all countries except for the United States in its independence in 18, early 1800s, led by Toussaint Overture. They, of course, broke away from France. Uh, capital of Haiti is Port-au-Prince, and the recent history of Haiti in the 20th century, you have Papa Doc Duvalier and Baby Doc Duvalier. So take a moment and go Wikipedia Duvaliers and uh, find out about him. You have the Dominican Republic, which, of course, uh, is noted for being somewhat baseball crazy, much like Cuba is. They love baseball down here at its capital of Santo Domingo. Of course, Puerto Rico, with its capital San Juan, is a U.S. territory. You have the Virgin Islands, both the U.K. Virgin Islands and the U.S. Virgin Islands, not a country, neither one. Uh, you have Antigua and Barbuda, not a country necessarily, I don't think. I could be wrong on that. St. Kitts and Nevis. Dominica with capital Rousseau. I take that back, Antigua and Barbuda, and I am almost positive that the capital is Georgetown. I am uh, uh, egg on my face, not knowing the capital of these places. I think St. Kitts and Nevis might be Basatere, but I could be wrong. You also have St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You have Barbados, which I think is Bridgetown, either Bridgetown or Georgetown. Again, I'm embarrassed. You have St. Lucia, and I, again, forget the capital of that place. I need to get on top of my capitals myself. Granada, and then Trinidad and Tobago with its capital of Port of Spain. So don't be like me. Know your capital of these little teeny tiny places uh, that you find here in the Caribbean. But that's it. Uh, not a very good uh, overview necessarily as far as in depth, but uh, there should be plenty of opportunity for you to go to QB Reader and find out about these places, or you could go to the Quiz Bowl um, 
folder on my Google Drive and go to NQT packets and just control F all of those packets with various different items of your various countries. So hopefully this was of some help to you, but keep studying, learn your countries, learn your country's capitals. And when they come up, I'll be able to obviously give the answer for the T. Thanks.